I just feel honored that I was put, you know, in, uh, in the planet at this particular time. I mean, I got ringside seats to Armageddon. Fucking in my, in my dirty, greasy, like, blown up, bloody hands. I got the ringside seats to watch Armageddon. I'm right here in Target Zero, New York City. I am honored. It's an honor to be born at these times. I mean, what are you going to fear? We're all going to die. <laughs> I told the curator that um, she asked me what I was going to do. And I said, well, I'm going to make these paper mache penises and vaginas, you know. And then she was like, oh, that sounds very subversive. I like that. <laughs> but of course, I had no intentions of, of doing that. So I came there with, um, with explosives strapped on and uh, a shotgun and, and live animals. I had live crickets, live um, frogs and toads, and live mice and rats, and I let them... Well, first I, I blew myself up, and, and then uh, my wife at the time, Nancy Piver, blew up in the audience, so the, now the audience is very confused. And then I started letting loose the, the live animals all over the theater, and then I poured the box of mice and rats on my head, so they were crawling on me. And, you know, and then I bit, you know, the heads off of the ones that were crawling on me. I mean, they were biting me, so I bit back. The curator, um, then, you know, I saw her in the, at the corner of my eye, and I, you know, and I had the shotgun, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all blown up. There's, ho there's a hole in my chest, and, you know, and, uh, and pieces of, of rats in my mouth is bleeding, and there's still, still, some still alive crawling on me, and I'm holding a shotgun. And then I was like, well, how'd you like the show? And I had the shotgun up to her head. It was good. I liked it. I said, I knew you'd like it. But, of course, the police were there, and, you know, and then I, you know, for the acts that I was doing back then, I got charged with... Um, for blowing myself up, I was charged with possession of an infernal machine. I grew up, uh, my father was a World War II veteran, and he fought in uh, Iwo Jima and Guadalcanal. And uh, that's the only time he was happy, was during, was during the war. Uh, he, was, he was really good. Uh, he was a good soldier. He was really good at... Uh, at being a soldier, but he wasn't good at, about being a father <laughs> or, a, or a husband, for that matter. <laughs> so he was a, a pretty brutal character, but it helped shaped, shape my life. When I was really young, uh, there was some, you know, typical shit going on at, at home, and I, you know, had this Stingray bike, and I, I drove it, you know, uh, to my old, st the elementary school that I was... And, and I, you know, I was, you know, I was, uh, I was smoking a cigarette and just thinking about things. You know, I was th maybe 13 at the time. And, and then I, when I was lighting the cigarettes, I'm looking at the grass was really dry. And that's right in front of the school. And, and uh, so at first I lit the grass, you know, and then the starts to catch fire, and then I put it out, really, you know, and then, and I'm smoking, and you know, thinking about things, and I'm looking at the grass some more, and then I, then I started the fire again, but I let it go a little bit farther, and then, <laughs> then I put it out again, and then I'm smoking some more, and I'm looking down, and okay, then I light it again, but I let it go even farther. Then I put it out. <laughs> so I'm doing this for a while, and eventually, like, the whole thing is on fire. <laughs> and, uh, 
and it, here's this little kid that's created like he, he's controlled somehow this you know this universe 70s i was doing it you know in childhood and then in the 80s i was doing what was i mean there was barely even anything called performance art at that point but i was also you know became labeled as a performance artist i mean i to me um art is something you can't define you know um what was it that was it john dubuffet that said when, when art's name is called it, it runs and hides i like Maybe when art's name is called, I grab my gun. <laughs> like my work has always been, whether it's performance work or or, or paintings. One of the main aspects of the of the works has to do with um, making uncomfortable the comfortable and comforting the uncomfortable. But since 9-11 and since in these days that are happening right now there are a lot more people that are uncomfortable <laughs> and so there are now more people that can i that you know that can identify uh, and feel and i'm also seeing like ha things happening in uh you know i i've been painting these things you know and i've you know i've prophesized them but and uh, in a in a way that's you know not it's not because I think about it. It's because my hand, you know, in in performance, I, I'm driven to do those performances. And when I'm painting, my hand tells me what to paint. I don't, you know, I, I don't sketch what I'm doing. It's The surface is blank when I start it. And I start, you know, a square inch at a time, and it reveals itself to me. The painting tells me what it what it wants to paint. But what happened? Yeah. Why do you think it's, it became... Uh, not acceptable, but they want to be shocked. Finally, it's like the freak show story. Eh? You, you, uh, finally, freak show became television. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I knew that. Uh, I mean, that that happened. Uh, that happened years ago. I mean, the, the freak show. Um, was all, was fascinating to me um, from the beginning. You know, but, uh, you know, like, uh, I have uh, some Johnny Eck artifacts in here. And Johnny Eck was the half man from Freaks. You know, the uh, the amazing Todd Brown, uh, Todd Browning movie uh, in which he cast actual deformed people who performed in, in circuses at the time, in sideshows. And, uh, and that movie pretty much single-handedly destroyed Todd Browning's career, but it's an amazing and heartfelt movie. So it's kind of strange, you know, when, uh, like, they want, uh, like, sometimes the audience wants it, it's but they, love and hate. yeah, yeah, love and a hate relationship, when they want, they, then, then they want a little bit more, but then when it's too much, oh, then, then they draw back. You know, it's like the, the you know, you know, there's, some people that are collecting, you know, like, you know, I've been collecting things, you know, my whole life, but now I see there's other people that are interested in oddities and, and things. And, and it's funny when, uh, like, somebody wants, you know, to, you know, like, for their collection, oh, the, I, I'm, I'm going to have a really strange thing in my collection. I'll have a skull. But then they want it. But then it's like not all dirty. No, don't don't want no hair. Clean it up so it's nice, you know, polished up and white. Because <laughs> then it looks like the plastic skull, you know.